Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to take a look at the user interface. So the user interface is basically the stuff on the screen that lets you tell SketchUp for iPad what you want to do. UI is the shorthand. That's, that's industry stuff, like you're, you're on the inside if you call it UI. You know, UI, yeah, the UI. Um, so it is basically how the controls are arranged, and we're going to take a look at that. We're not going to dive into every control, because that's what this series is about, of course. We'll do deep dives into each individual tool, but just to talk about how the, how the pieces are set up and how they function, uh, we'll take a look at that right now. All right, so when I come into SketchUp for iPad, this is what I see. I have, there's really three main uh, sets of controls. At the upper left corner, here's where we have like the home button that's going to take us back to the, the front, uh, the, the, the home screen, undo, redo, and then of course, uh, uh, downloading or exporting your files. So that stuff's up there. That's kind of like the, the file menu basically up there. On the left and right sides, we have our actual UI, the controls that we're going to use. So coming down the left side, this is where we have the different buttons that are going to let us, you know, activate different tools inside the of SketchUp. And then on the right side, we have the different palettes that we're going to use also. So uh, just to, let's look at both of these individually. So we'll start with the, the palettes on the right side, the, these little flyouts here. So you can see I have a, a series of buttons down the right side and clicking on any one of them opens that palette up. You can see that the other palettes, when you do that, the, the, the little buttons go past where you can actually see them. If you click and drag on here though, you can always scroll. So if I have, if I like having lots of stuff available to me and everything open, I can do that and then just scroll up and down to get to what I need. Now there's, each of these different palettes is resizable. So here I have, I have 10 tags here. I can click this little black bar at the bottom and drag it up to make it smaller. I can also, of course, drag it down to make it bigger and make it bigger than the amount of information there actually is in there. So I can make it real big for, I don't know why you do that, but you can. If you double click this little bar right here, it'll auto size to the data that is in that particular piece. So uh, this is exactly resizing to the 10 tags I have. Um, Pretty nice, pretty easy. It's gonna remember what's open, what's closed. Generally speaking, to get the most out of the screen, this will, pr most people will probably work with these uh, closed in the buttons here and just pull them up as they're needed and then close them again. There are icons on each of the buttons. If you don't remember what the icon means, you can actually just quickly tap and swipe to the left and little titles will show up. Again, clicking on the titles and swiping to the right will disappear those titles. If you want to reorder this, so here I have materials at the bottom, but I'm going to say I use materials a lot, so I want to do the second one up here. If you click and kind of hold, you can actually drag to reorder those icons. So very customizable, just get the information you want. You can't get rid of them. I can't like say, oh, I don't want this anymore. Get, get rid of that altogether. I can't move them anywhere else. They're, just, they're, on, the, they're on the side, um, but you can, Put them in the order you want and only show the pieces you need and control how much information's in there by resizing that panel. On the left side, this is the big one. This is, of course, the, the main toolbar. Over here, we can actually activate the most commonly used commands are what are in this list right here. Um, clicking on any of these does fly out this overflow panel, the secondary panel, which are your options for the specific command. So if I'm in the select window, I have the ability to add, remove, or add, remove from the selection, or I can come over here to pencil and get my inferencing options. Um, very nice, very easy. If I click on something that has an input, you see it'll automatically pop up on the screen. It'll come up and ask me for whatever that is, the, the, the toolbar to, to get that information. This isn't dockable. It's not always here. If I go to a different command that doesn't have it, it disappears. One of the things that we were very conscious of, this was just very well designed, is the information you need shows up. You don't have to say, oh, I want to set the sides. You're in a circle, so it assumes you may want to set the sides. Here's a little field to do that with. Um, if 
I have a command. So, so like I said, the most commonly used commands are here on the side. If you have more than that, so there's obviously there's more commands than, than are here. That's this little dot, dot, dot button on the left side. If I click on that, I get the rest of the commands. These are all the commands. So right now I'm seeing everything. All the commands in SketchUp for iPad are currently on the screen. Um, so if I want to click something that's not in the default panel, like my polygon tool, I can go grab it from here. And then what will happen is that polygon tool then will stay here as the most recently used command at the bottom of the toolbar. If I want to change something, so say I use polygon a lot more than I use offset. So I want to take offset off the toolbar and we'll put polygon in its place. Um, there is a limit to how many things you can have on the toolbar. It doesn't scroll like the panels do on the right side. So right now it's all the way full. So if I wanted to put polygon on this toolbar, I would have to make room. And that's why I was saying I'll take uh, offset out. Just like with the panels on the right, if I click and hold on one of these toolbars, I can reorder them. So if I wanted to change where this was supposed to be, I could click, drag it, drop it. If I want to replace, if I grab the polygon tool and bring it up, I can't put it anywhere. It won't actually fit because like I said, it's full. So what I would have to do is I'd have to take one of those commands off, so I'm take offset, drag it, and uh, we'll do this. We'll go bring out my, my full one here, my full my, my additional tools, and I'll drag offset and put it right here with follow me and tag. And then I can take this command, my, my polygon tool, and put that up here right next to circle. And now I've customized my UI, so that will always stay here and then offset is now in my overflow. So very customizable, very easy to use. And like I said, one of the nice things is it only shows you the information you need when you need it. You don't have to go fishing around for user interface. Uh, it gives you what you need automatically. So that's most of what I could think about for using the user interface. Like I said, the goal here is to explain how the tools work, not necessarily what every button does. That's going to keep coming. We're going to have a lot, I mean, dozens of these videos uh, by the time we're done talking about each command and how it works. So keep an eye out for that. Watch this playlist. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Then as these different Square One videos come out, you'll be notified of them. You'll get them, you'll get notified. Uh, most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Do you like the, how the UI works? Uh, what part of it do you like the most? Is there a part you, you would change if you could? We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.